Hello, I'm Austin Jarrett. I want to talk to you about a frequently asked question that we get through our social media, and that is, which should I buy, the classic 17L or the Kensington 17B? What is the difference? They're both 17 inch wide machines, but the Kensington is about 40% more expensive than the classic. So I just wanted to explain what it is that you get for the difference in the money. The similarities, of course, are that they are both self-propelled machines, so they both drive the cylinder and drive the rear roller. We recommend as a guide that both of these machines are for lawns of about 280 square metres and in a fairly square lawn without too many fiddly areas that would be about 20 minutes worth of mowing. They both have a minimum height of cut of 6 millimetres and a maximum height of cut of 32 millimetres. So let's look at the differences for the 40% difference in the money. Weight is always a really good indicator of what's in the product. And the Classic 17 is 41 and a half kilos and the Kensington is 51 kilos. So already there is 10 kilograms worth of extra steel and components in this machine over and above the Classic machine, a good indicator. What does the weight give us? Actually, it gives you slightly better, slightly longer lasting stripe because weight is definitely a function of good quality striping. The grass boxes. Uh, the grass box on the Classic is quite lightweight, open, fills well, sits on top of a cradle which folds up, uh, whereas the Kensington is a heavier duty grass box altogether with a nice handle on the top and that hangs actually from the cradle at the top. That means it's less likely to bump off if you bump into the rockery or something like that. Now you can see the front rollers and the front roller is a major difference. On this one I've got a polyethylene plastic front roller. It doesn't have bearings and it uses the plastic journals here as its bearing. Whereas on the Kensington this is steel, it's uh, protected from rust by being galvanised and there is a bearing in each side. More precision, longer lasting. You'll notice here there is a rake just behind the front roller on the Kensington. Uh, of course this is extra cost, there is no rake on the Classic. What does the rake do? The rake just combs the grass as you mow. You can adjust it on screws on either side here so I can adjust the aggressiveness of that rake but by combing the grass, especially the weed grasses which are growing flat, tends to bring those up to mow and gives them a harder time to allow the grasses that you really want to grow um, puts them in a more competitive position. Behind the rake or behind the roller on this product here is the cutting cylinder. The bottom blades are exactly the same uh, but we have a five bladed cylinder on the Classic and a six bladed cylinder on the Kensington. What does that mean in difference? It gives a slightly finer cut. Both cylinders spin at the same speed but what that gives us on the five bladed cylinder that gives us 66 clips in every meter traveled forward and on the Kensington that gives us 79 clips so it's a slightly finer cut and you won't notice that above 25 millimeters high but the lower you go sub 20 millimeters then you will start to see the washboarding and where the clips appear on the classic. Um, it, it's a small difference and going below 20 millimeters doesn't necessarily give you a good general purpose lawn but if you were going for more of a bowling green type finish or a golf green finish then the more blades you have the more likely you are to be able to achieve that. The Alec Kensingtons also come with a front wheel kit. These wheels can be used to replace the front roller. When you're mowing long grass, the front roller tends to knock the grass down before your mower mows it. And by using the wheel kit, it allows the long grass to go in and be cut by the cylinder. The engines on the machines, both good engines, uh, we're using the Chinese manufactured 
Lonsin on the classic engine, on the classic uh, mower. Uh, the Lonsin uh, engine is an 87cc capacity uh, engine. It's good, it's a good starter. We have very little trouble with this engine. It's maybe slightly noisier and is maybe more of a second pull starter, but still reliable starter. We're using the Briggs and Stratton uh, XR1, uh, sorry, XR550 engine. Uh, this is a slightly bigger engine at 127 cc's uh, and it's got a nice uh, bigger uh, two litre fuel tank. Uh, this engine is a start first time every time um, and is, is just that little bit quieter as well. The height adjustments on these machines is something that is significantly different. I'm just going to turn the machine sideways. Of course the height of cut is controlled by the position of the front roller. And here on the Classic you can see I have a dial and I have six positions that I can put this dial into and that gives me the six steps of the height of cut change from lowest at six millimeters through to the top at 32 millimeters but it does give me jumps in the height of cut that I can achieve that's fine if I decide I'm going to work at 19 millimeters high and I always work at 19 millimeters that's fine on the Kensington we have something that is slightly more sophisticated we still have the window in the side here so we can see numbers to give us the relative position of the height of cut but I now have a stepless change in height of cut from 6 millimeters to 32 by just turning this screw type knob and you can see that's just adjusting it so I end up with a, no steps between the heights of cut that I choose that becomes particularly important with the cartridges that you can put into these machines which we're going to talk about a bit later. From the operator position the Classic is a little bit more basic uh, in terms of the handlebar construction. I, I'm holding on to painted steel here, a little bit cold first thing in the morning and the bars to engage drive to the cylinder and the roller are, are, are slightly more basic. On the Kensington, I have a comfort grip and I have uh, much nicer to hold bail bars as well. I I'm only holding these bars for 20 minutes at a time, so it really doesn't make a massive difference, but it is just this slightly more premium and more expensive console of the machine. The handlebars both have three different height positions, so I can adjust the height here dependent on the height of the operator. Uh, and on the Kensington, to fold up, I just have a lever which I can engage to fold up the handlebars, whereas on the Classic, I have a screw knob which I need to do like so. If you don't need to fold these handlebars up to transport the machine or to store in the garage, then it doesn't really make that much difference and the machine stores like so. Another small thing that just is for comfort for the starting position I'm reaching down to the engine on the classic in order to pull start uh, whereas the Kensington the pull start is already at a position where I'm nearly standing up already a small thing but these all, all, all make a difference I'm sure now let's look at uh, what in my opinion is quite a big thing and a big difference and when I turn these machines around and we look at the rear roller which of course is so important from the striping perspective you might just be able to see the difference the 17 inch roller on the classic is a single piece roller and on the Kensington it's a two piece roller what difference is that going to make with the single piece roller when I come to turn at the end of a run and I spin the machine around that single piece roller is much more likely to create scuffing at the end and that will wear the turf uh, noticeably at the ends. Whereas the split rear roller on the Kensington where both roll sides of the roller are able to travel at their own speed and are driven via a differential built into the rear roller uh, that explains quite a lot of the cost of production of these two machines which is reflected in the retail price but you will see on our professional products too that it's highly important 
that we have this split roller for straight lining and for reduction of scuffing at the ends of runs. So finally, the very biggest difference for me is the interchangeable cartridges. Both of these machines, you are able to undo six screws and remove the cutting cartridge, and that's great for serviceability. With the Classic, we use the Scarifier cartridge for cultivating the lawn. We know that great lawns are not just made from cylinder mowing, but from also doing other essential cultivations. The Scarifier cartridge is absolutely the, the most versatile cult cultivation cartridge that we have in our range. But because of the more clunky height of cut, we recommend that none of our other cartridges fit into this machine. But on the Kensington with the stepless screw adjustment height, uh, I can adjust to exactly the depth that I want with the cultivation cartridges. So whereas I just use the optional Scarify cartridge with this machine, I have a range of six cartridges with this machine, uh, the Kensington, which gives me that greater versatility. So I can fit not only the Scarifier cartridge, but the Tembladed cartridge for much finer cutting at lower heights of cut, the Verticut for cutting into the sward and getting new growth out, Dethatcher for serious thatch reduction, also the Brush cartridge for sweeping and light uh, removal of uh, loose material on the surface of the turf and finally the aerator cartridge and that whole armory of, uh, of cartridges which I can use so well with the Kensington machine it, it absolutely for me makes it the winner and that is why if you like I'm justifying the additional cost with this machine. So to wrap it up to make your decision a cylinder produces the best possible cut. Rear rollers on the cylinder mowers produce those wonderful stripes. There is very little difference between those two, the, these two products in terms of what they do. But if you want me to categorize them, this is for the enthusiast. You really care about your lawn and you want to take it to the next level, then the Classic is absolutely a superb product. If you want to be more expert about the way that you work with your lawn, then there is no doubt the Kensington is worth the extra money and of course the extra cartridges that go in there just give you the groundsmanship type uh, ability to be able to cultivate your lawn and get absolutely excellent results. More precise, more control. I hope that's been helpful and will help you make your choice between these two great machines out of the Allet stable.